At the general committee meeting held last week, two significant matters were deliberated. The proposed development at 303 Kundals Road East has been revised to include three new apartment towers ranging in height from 8 to 12 stories and 505 residential units with a reduced rear yard setback from the highway. However, Councillor Anne-Marie Kangal expressed concern about the noise impact and asked if there is a way to proactively engage the Ministry of Transportation for sound barriers. The city staff responded that it is up to the municipality and landowner to deal with the land use near the highway. But the ministry has been involved and could evaluate the need for sound barriers in new construction and design. The final approval of the rezoning could be considered by the city council at the April 19th meeting. Regarding another issue, Barry City Council has given initial approval to the update to private tree bylaw. New regulations will require an arborist report if a tree is being removed or if construction is taking place next to a tree that needs protection. The changes will apply to trees that are at least 15 feet tall and are aimed at reducing damage to privately owned trees due to private construction and excavation projects. Councillor Gary Harvey questioned the need for creating huge process and adding two new staff positions for the 15 permits issued per year. Mayor Alex Nuttall said it is an opportunity to increase the city's canopy and beautify areas as well as protect fish habitats. Barry has 71% tree canopy on private property and 29% on public land, totaling more than 7,500 acres out of around 25,000 acres area. In 2018, the city's total canopy cover was 31% of its land. The private city bylaw is expected to receive its final approval at the city council meeting on April 19th. Follow the timestamps in the description to jump to the relevant section of the video. Sent items. I'll read out the title associated with the recommended motions printed on the agenda. Members of general committee may ask that an item be held to discuss the matter further. If an item is not held, the motion is deemed to be approved on consent. No further discussion of the item will take place at general committee and will go forward to the next city council meeting for consideration. Reports, reports of reference committee or advisory or special committees. 5.1, the report of the, sa uh, the community safety committee dated March 22nd, 2023 to be received. Councilor Morales, uh, at this point, can I ask you for an overview of the matters that were discussed? Perfect. Thank you, Mayor Lehman. So the overviews at the community safety meeting for... I'm sorry. I was just told I did the thing. Um, you owe me a coffee. That's, that's it. I don't drink coffee, so you can have it. Uh, thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, so the overview for this meeting specifically was a presentation from the fire chief of Barry Emergency Services. Um, he overwent the expansion of Station 6 uh, about basically how we station our trucks, how we do coverage, and kind of a wholesome approach to it. I don't believe there was any other presentations. Um, members of committee and non-committee asked a couple questions in terms of growth and cost and recruitment as well. Um, and how, how, if we're, how we're an attractive um, uh, fire, uh, fire service uh, for applicants to apply. So this one was mostly presentations and uh, staying consistent with what council approved months ago about providing regular updates. I'll be providing updates on this committee when it's more than just presentations as well. Thank you, Councillor. And uh, we now have the report of the Affordability Committee dated March 22nd, 2023 to be received. Uh, Councillor Nixon, could you provide a little bit of an overview from that meeting? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, the um, meeting March 27th uh, uh, came to order at 6.05. We had all of the members of the Affordable uh, Committee uh, present, as well as five other councillors and nine staff members. Uh, the the uh, main item on the agenda was a presentation um, by Tyler uh, Coel of uh, IPS regarding the application for zoning bylaw amendment 427, 429, 431, 435, and 447, 449, 451, 453, uh, Young Street. 
Um, and we had uh, eight citizens uh, address the committee with their concerns and comments. And um, the matter was recommended to uh, General Committee for consideration of receipt at its uh, meeting held tonight. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Nixon, for the update with regards to the Affordability Committee. Uh, we will now move on to staff reports. We'll start with the zoning bylaw amendment for 303 Cundles Road East. Hold, please. It's held by Councillor Cungle. Next is the municipal street naming for streets in Harvey Road draft plan of subdivision Ward 6. That's approved. The zoning bylaw amendment application 181 Burton Avenue, Ward 8. That's approved. The Golfdale Road, no parking anytime restrictions, Ward 4. That's approved. The tax ratios, it's approved. A couple of Craigs, breathe a sigh of relief there. The 2022 year end development charge reports and treasurer statement. That's approved. The 2022 year end cash in lieu of parkland report and treasurer statement. That's approved. The private tree bylaw and ecological offsetting review. Hold. Hold, please. It's held by Council Morales. Items for discussion, the invitation to present downtown Barry business improvement area. And that's approved. Okay, with no public meetings, presentations, or deferred business, we'll jump right into uh, held reports. Councillor Kungle, I will start with you. Could you put the motion on the floor, please? Yes, I'll put the motion on the floor as presented. I have a couple of comments and then a few questions of staff. Uh, so specifically, this is regarding the development on 303 Cundles Road East. Uh, I'll start off by, one, thanking um, Ms. Kitsemetry for the comprehensive report, but in addition, um, this one we had quite a bit of engagement from residents in the adjoining uh, two towers at the junction, uh, and then those um, in the north of, of Cundles. And so I do want to express my appreciation, the compliments from residents engaged in the process. Um, while there have been several questions have been Highly appreciative of the very responsive and thorough feedback and follow-up given by the planner on the file. So thank you, Celeste. I um, I won't go into too much detail. I do have a couple of questions, but I did want to just make it a point to make sure residents were aware that um, this is um, being discussed and should it be approved at general committee. It does come back on the 19th for ratification because of the holiday. So not next week, but the following week. Uh, I will point uh, residents to this report as most of the, all of the questions were very well um, kind of resurfaced. I didn't see anything new from that that was addressed as presented by the developer uh, in the fall consultation. Um, and I do want to thank the work and effort that staff and the developer um, did in collaboration in response to several questions. Uh, there were many changes made up front um, that I'm not needing to address tonight. Um, I will comment on those uh, briefly, but I think I'll start with um, of the three buildings on this site, um, there was a change to um, the stacking of the stories. So rather than three 10-story towers, um, it was modified to accommodate a bit more of a site view um, for, the, for the neighborhood. Um, so the 12-story uh, is the largest of the three towers near the 400. And I believe, uh, if I may frame this in a question to Ms. Um I know that the Ministry of Transportation is the authority around approving sound barriers. In Ward 3, more recently, we have seen the construction of one just a little bit north off the 400 um, towards Little Lake. This one has not been in the area, although a lot of questions coming from residents at the junction, especially those with balconies facing the 400, um, raised questions about when is it appropriate to be considered for sound barriers. 
I didn't know uh, if with uh, the potential approval of this development and a 12-story um, also being added in quite close proximity to the 400, uh, if there is a process by which we can proactively engage the Ministry of Transportation, or does it sit within what's noted on page 14 under site plan control? It does identify um, through you that site plan control applications for this development includes satisfactory demonstrating and A, identified noise mitigation measures for transportation sources in 400. So I know there's some responsibility on the developer, be it around material or, or otherwise, but is there a way we could proactively re-engage the ministry, um, noting that this is a potential development with considerable density um, close to the 400? Okay, uh, through you, Mayor Nuttall, to uh, Councillor Kungle. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, the Ministry of Transportation does leave it to the municipality and the, and the private landowner uh, to deal with um, the introduction of land use, in particular sensitive land use, in proximity to the highway. Uh, that usually is done in accordance with provincial guidelines um, that uh, outline warning clauses on title, um, construction measures that need to be implemented in the building. Um, but I can say that uh, the ministry has been very involved with the process. They have provided comments. Um, we can certainly ask them to, um, to see whether or not they would evaluate whether or not barriers uh, would be something they would consider through their uh, new construction and design. Should that be um, in follow-up to that, then should this be ratified on the 19th? Um, do I need to potentially embed any type of direction to staff, or could that just be done in the course of this development having been then approved? Um, through you, uh, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Kungle. Um, the detailed design and, and how um, it integrates into the community and more specifically um, with the highway uh, could be done through the site plan control process okay. rather than uh, zoning, and that can certainly be explored in the interim as well. Uh, the principle of land use um, isn't going to be impacted necessarily by whether or not the barriers are there because other measures will need to be undertaken regardless. Okay, thank you. Um, I do have just a point of kind of uh, um, confirmation. So while we looked at the different type of mixed units uh, in this, and we still get questions, of course, about affordable housing or is it geared towards seniors, and that was a historical question. And in the report, I know you've um, identified that um, in particular, this developer has identified that the mixed units um, should accommodate different sizes of households, different levels of income, and, and um, basically be more attainable, uh, as we don't have a requirement to fulfill affordable, affordable housing units. Um, on that note, my understanding is this has been framed as a condominium, but at this time, is there any other detail tied to rental units and or uh, how this actually will be marketed? Uh, through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Kungle. I do not have any um, additional details from the applicant with regards to either the tenure, which whether it will be rental, condominium, um, or the, the detailed interior design for how the units are, are going to work. We will be doing that through um, detailed review at site plan control, and they will have to come in for a pre-consultation as well. Um, and we can certainly um, investigate those opportunities at that time. Great, thank you. I think those are really the only ones, and that that's not <laughs> at all a do in uh, not having had a really thorough um, review of this historically, but also again uh, in thanks to a very comprehensive response throughout the whole report about justifications to the act, to the review, and the consideration with what's being proposed tonight. So I think um, you've done me a great service with resident engagement about having fact-based information to point to. That's quite sound. So I appreciate that because that is a significant change. Overall, for other members of council and, and the public, um, I would say um, I was quite pleased overall with what came back, um, that considerations were made on several accounts. Um, and I know through conversations with the developer ongoing work that will happen through the site plan control. But I did want to say when we look at developments coming forward, um, if you're not familiar with 303 Cundles and proximity to the North Crossing commercial area, two other uh, condo towers, uh, and then to the north of Cundles, um, uh, single detached homes with proximity to three schools, 
this is good infill. Um, and so I know it's higher than what would have been liked, um, but I think it fits the measure of what we're looking for around development that also has gone through a uh, significant review, but also utilizes existing infrastructure and services, and also does tend to lean towards um, mobilization and activation around our transit services and time. My only other point, I think just for um, residents viewing, is that um, the outstanding question still that we've been exploring tied to this development, of course, is cundles and traffic. And we really are talking about the behavior of drivers. Um, and I know that near misses continue to get reported at, I would say, a high volume of concern. And I, I take that to heart, and I'm paying attention to that. Um, and so while I just want to make note, through the traffic study, it is not warranted that we're looking at any type of traffic calming infrastructure to be added. I respect that in the findings. Um, I am meeting with staff this month and traffic services and Barrie Police to continue to explore how might we continue to pay attention to safety of the neighborhood, but also um, traffic calming measures. Um, so I want to thank residents who have been very active and consistently diligent about identifying concerns, especially those around the intersection of Cundles and Pacific. Um, in addition to that, I'm hoping to explore with traffic services um, the timing of our red light camera uh, program coming back. I believe we did fund two. I'm not aware that we've identified locations yet, but I'm hoping to see if that program does create revenue, uh, how we might be ex able to expand it and how we might be able to look at Cundles as a, as a unique area and what data is needed to, to justify some type of um, red light camera in that, in that vicinity. So thank you again to staff. Thank you again to residents that engaged with me on this and attended the meetings. And I was actually quite pleased with the uh, structure and even the attention to, um, I think 40% is even being focused on this site being landscaped. So I think there's, it'll be a beautiful end product um, that I'm quite confident in. Thank you, Councillor Kungle. Um, is there any, no other questions or comments? I do have uh, two quick questions that I'd like to ask. Um, with regards to Cundles East, there is one of the scariest places in the city of Barrie for drivers and pedestrians at the corner of St. Vincent and Cundles East, uh, where you have a lane actually ending, but after the intersection. Uh, if you're going west, I'm not sure if it's west or north, but if you're going, I guess, west uh, from this development through the intersection, uh, on the far side of the intersection, the lane just ends. And it creates a really, really, really scary situation uh, inside of that intersection as well as um, on both sides because drivers are accelerating. So you're going to add more traffic, hundreds more vehicles, uh, and this area is actually building up overall. It, it seems like it's something that's been left over from a long time ago that just has never been dealt with. Um, is there any, uh, I, I know the traffic plans and studies in this probably wouldn't encompass it because it's a little outside of the direct neighborhood, uh, but is that something that could be looked at as well? As just as you were speaking there about traffic, about uh, uh, density and height and all that stuff, it kind of just reminded me from a conversation or 10 I had during the election at that intersection. Uh, through you, Mayor Nuttall, to you. Um, sorry, <laughs> apologies. <laughs> It's late. <laughs> um, I can certainly bring that up with our transportation planning staff to see whether or not it's being addressed in the new master plan for the transportation um, activity in that area. You're correct that it probably is outside of the, the spectrum of what was done for the TIS for this particular development, but there are lots of developments in that area, so um, I can certainly bring that up with the team. Thank you. <clears throat> and also, I just wanted to, uh, this isn't a question, this is actually a statement. You know, when we're looking at uh, this corridor, we've seen, you know, you've got uh, entertainment, you have grocery, uh, there's restaurants, um, there's a, an ability, if safe enough, to be able to walk to, to these types of items. And so I, I really do like the idea that uh, if we're going to have infill, this is where to do it. But if we're going to have infill, we need to make sure it's a safe driving and pedestrian environment. And... Um, I don't always feel that way. You know, Pacific, Livingston, St. Vincent, uh, Georgian, uh, uh, between Georgian Drive and uh, Jamie Massey Way, there, there's, there's a lot of uh, 
uh, there's a lot of uh, risk there. And so over time, hopefully, uh, we can we can mitigate some of that. <laughs> and uh, I think I confessed a couple weeks ago to uh, to, to riding my kids uh, around there on the bike, and it's it is uh, it is a really uh, it's an area that needs some attention. Anyways, uh, with other questions or comments, uh, we'll call the vote. All those in favor, and it's approved. Our next and final final item to discuss this evening. is the private tree bylaw and ecological offsetting review and that was held by council morales thank you mayor nettle um i'm gonna if, if it's okay with you i'm gonna let Councillor harris go first he was the one that actually moved the motion he's the one that uh, had a lot of the concerns that kind of originated this so i just out of respect i want to let him go first i just was a little jumpy and i do have an amendment but i'd rather him let kind of guide the tone of the conversation because again while there's trees in the whole city it's kind of started in, in ward eight so if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Councillor Harris. Thank you, uh, Mayor Nuttall, and uh, thank you, Councillor Morales. Um, so I have a, uh, put that on the floor as printed, and I have an amendment. And the amendment, uh, to, to amend the following paragraphs in Appendix A to Staff Report OPR 001-23, I apologize, there's a lot. <clears throat> um, so, First, to delete and replace paragraph 1E with the following. 1E, certified arborist means a person who is a specialist or expert in the area of the care and maintenance of trees and includes a graduate of a post-secondary education in arboricultural, arboricultural, <laughs> arboriculture, sorry, qualified by Skilled Trades Ontario or a certified arborist qualified by the International Society of Arboriculture a consulting arborist registered with the American Society of Consulting Arborists, a registered professional forester, or a person with other similar qualifications as approved by the director. And to delete and replace paragraph 5C with the following. 5C, every application be accompanied by a report from either I, uh, a landscape architect, registered professional forester, or certified arborist providing such information with respect to the property as may be specified in the tree protection manual, and certifying that the, in, the injury or destruction of trees is required to permit the establishment of extension of a use permitted by zoning bylaw and there is no reasonable alternative to injury or destruction of the tree or trees, or a registered professional forester providing such information with respect to the woodlot as may be specified in the tree protection manual and, if applicable, certifying that the proposed injury to or destruction of the trees is in accordance with good forestry practice. To delete paragraph 6A and replace with the following. 6A, subject to paragraph 6B, the director may issue a permit to injure or destroy trees where the director is satisfied that. And then to delete paragraph 6B, um, I, one, uh, two, and replace with the following. 6B, uh, as, a, as a report as required by paragraph 5C has not been submitted or does not meet the minimum specifications as outlined with the tree protection manual. Uh, to delete paragraph 7A and replace with the following. 7A, marking of trees at least seven days prior to injuring or destroying any tree, but not prior to the issuance of the permit, the owner shall cause all trees which are to be removed and dest or destroyed to be marked by a registered professional forester, certified arborist, qualified forest technician, or landscape architect with clearly visible marks of yellow paint at breast height and upon the stump to remain after cutting. To delete paragraph 7C2 and replace with the following. 7C2, the owner shall cause the installation of all tree preservation measures to be completed under the supervision of the landscape architect, registered professional forester or certified arborist and approved by the city of Barrie. Such measures shall be inspected on a regular basis by the landscape architect registered for professional forester or certified arborist and a bi-monthly report made to the director for the duration of the active period of construction. Uh, to delete paragraph 7E2 and replace with the following, uh, 72 prior to the commencement of any work that would result in injury or destruction to or destruction of trees authorized pursuant to this bylaw, the person causing such work to be carried out shall ensure that the permit is posted in a conspicuous place on the property or is available on site 
and can be produced upon request by an officer. The failure to post or produce a permit as required shall constitute an offense. <clears throat> and getting near the end, to re reference Schedule A instead of Schedule B in designation of officers A. Um, to reference Schedule B instead of Schedule C in Sections 12A. To reference Section 12, Subsection A instead of Section B, Subsection B in Paragraph 12E. 12E, Subsection A. To reference Schedules a, B, in Section 15A instead of AC. B, uh, to uh, delete Schedule A information included in the Tree Protection Manual. To rename Schedule B to A and Schedule C to B. And I think that we may have it. <laughs> and of course I can speak to that in great detail. <laughs> Council Harris, now I have your notes. Uh, could you please repeat that so I know that you know what you're talking about? <laughs> no, you go ahead. It's on the floor. Uh, thank you. So um, uh, thank you, Mayor Nuttall, and uh, thank you, staff. These, these were items I've lost them now because Mr. Mayor Nuttall has them, but were items that were uh, brought forward as a uh, cleanup and with some of the consultation that's happened over the last week. So again, thank you, staff, for all the work that's gone into uh, putting this uh, work together. And uh, yes, um, uh, some of the um, roots of this, uh, pun intended, uh, were, were uh, from Ward 8 and some of the challenges associated really directly with some of the um, efforts to increase housing stock, but the, the uh, secondary detached dwellings really did uh, pose some challenges for trees. And in neighborhoods, and I know um, uh, Council Ritma in mature neighborhoods, we have mature trees and we have big yards and they make themselves uh, in conflict sometimes when you're trying to, to uh, do new things like secondary attached dwellings and uh, unfortunately some uh, wonderful trees in the effort to increase housing were damaged and uh, this is going to help help us. Uh, we've, as noted I think earlier tonight, there's been some changes to our um, bylaws around um, secondary attached dwellings and also now around trees. So hopefully we've done some good work to clean up this uh, situation and make things better for our tree canopy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harris, and thank you for uh, taking this on. I think to the very fact that this is uh, coming on the floor um, is is actually uh, much of it is just democracy at work, and folks paying attention to what's coming through council, and then highlighting some potential issues that we're able to address up front. So, uh, thank you. To, I think some of the folks are here. Thank you for bringing that forth, uh, and thank you, Councillor Harris, for uh, for pushing it through behind the scenes here and, and getting all this prepared with uh, with our with our team. Is there any questions or comments with regards, uh, Councillor Kungel, with regards to the amendment that's on the floor right now? Uh, specific to the amendment on the floor, I just want to thank staff because I think a lot of this came through uh, engagement with residents um, that were concerned about um, just some housekeeping tied to how we saw Arborists as uh, qualified and certified within the role. So I do want to thank the very quick um, way in which staff acknowledged and addressed that and engaged to, to actually land some of these very comprehensive changes uh, on tonight's um, floor. So thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor Kungel. Are there any other comments or questions with regards to the amendment that's on the floor to the main motion? Seeing none, I'm going to call the vote on the amendment to all those in favour. And it carries. So now the uh, main motion as amended. Uh, Councillor Morales. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. My amendment that I'm putting on the floor as read aloud is to amend the following paragraph in Appendix A uh, in Staff Report OPR 001-23 to delete paragraph 4K and replace it with the following. The injuring or destruction of trees undertaken for the purpose of property maintenance under the advice of a landscape architect, registered professional forester, qualified forest technician, or certified arborist that is exclusive of any activity related to construction, development, or woodland management subject to the owner retaining a copy of the advice for a period of no less than one year. And I can speak to that quickly. Councillor, the, uh, the floor is yours on the amendment. Perfect. So as read and put on the floor, I, 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 I was consulting with staff that were very helpful today, by the way, and I want to highlight how incredibly helpful they were with this. Um, I just saw scenarios. You always have to think of those kind of friction points and maybe somebody was away for a couple months, they come back, they see a tree's gone um, and they might have questions, but 
this one specifically speaks to trees that are dead or sick, in which case they don't need permits. All they would need is that letter and that opinion from those qualified individuals. So I just wanted to make sure that it is clear in our bylaw that just the homeowner should keep it. So if there's any ever any follow-up and the city does just knock and say, hey, um, I know you never had to apply or you had to pay, but can you just show us that? I don't want someone saying, well, you never told me to keep it. The bylaw was ambiguous. So um, it was staff that kind of recommended the one year. I floated 30 days, 60 days, 90 days a year, what is reasonable. And now there's, it's just tightening up some language and not uh, creating ambiguous situations. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Councilor Morales. Are there any other questions or comments with regards to uh, Councilor Harvey? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Nuttall. I just want to touch on one point uh, that was just mentioned about it being a fairly economical thing. I, I think this actually goes the opposite direction for this. This is actually going to cost homeowners significantly when you look at... So I, I actually reached out to a company just to see how much it would cost to have an arborist come by and look at a tree, and I was told it was anywhere between 800 to at least $1,200. Um, so regardless of a permit fee, a resident would be into it for 800 to $1,200. Um, I struggle with this. I know the principle behind it. It's It's been an issue in more of our mature areas of our city, especially with these detached dwellings that were in the backyards. Um, but in the end, this kind of goes against our Lean Six, Lean Six Sigma process that we adopted during the last council, and it's creating a much more convoluted process. And according to the staff report, we've only had issues or permits averaging about 15 per year and we're creating a, a huge process now in regards to those 15 permits. And on, to, on top of that, two new staff positions that are going to be north of $200,000. So I, I struggle with it. I understand the principles behind it. But I, uh, I will support it tonight. I will follow up further with staff. I know uh, many of you have uh, been forwarded the answers to the questions that I've been sending through. But... Uh, I, I, do, I do struggle with this because it uh, it, it really does go against uh, the Lean Six Sigma approach that uh, we're supposed to be using in the city. Um, definitely when it comes to the clearing of tree lots and all that, that's pretty clear cut. No issues with that. <laughs> and, and we know that that's going to be an issue in my ward, for instance, because of, uh, of the new development in the Salem area. But uh, I just wanted to kind of bring some shed some light on the fact that this is actually going to cost our homeowners. It's not going to save our homeowners. It might stop some of the turmoil when it comes to these tree issues, um, but in the end it will, will cause our homeowners to have to uh, pay at least 800 to $1,200 uh, to have this issue uh, resolved when it comes up. So I'll, I'll leave my comments at that. I will support it tonight, and I'll uh, follow up further with staff uh, before this gets uh, final approval in two weeks. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Councillor Morales. Super quickly, Mayor Nettle. Uh, thank you, Councillor Harvey, for your comments. I agree with a lot of what you said. Um, my amendment is just to put in the word one year. However, if by the time it gets to Council, maybe we just wait, you know, do exactly what you said and take away the cost, I could be supportive of that. So I just want to reiterate, my amendment isn't to support that requirement for dead trees. It's just, it was just clarifying language about the one year. But I like the, at least the discussion that you're, that you're uh, alluding to, so maybe we can have a conversation by the time it gets to the council. Thank you, Councilor Morales. Are any other questions or comments? Okay. Seeing no other questions or comments to the amendment, all those in favor? It carries. Are there any other questions or comments with regards to the main motion now? Uh, we'll go around the table. Councilor Ritma. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and um, I, too, want to compliment staff. Um, they have uh, put up with a lot of my questions and uh, answered them very well. So thank you for that. Um, I just have one question uh, now, and that is, in the recommended motion, item number five, um, there's uh, the staff are going to form a tree bylaw standards subcommittee. Um, and... Um, one of the question, one of the issues that we have here in Barrie is that we plant trees and five years later they're struggling to survive and six years later they're dead. And 
that is a terrible waste of time and money and energy. And it seems to me that, um, and from what I've been told, uh, there are a couple of things. One of them has to do with how we plant them. Um, I, I heard it was green side up, but um, it, it's how we plant them. And then secondly, how we maintain them in terms of watering and fertilizing them and eventually pruning them. So my question is, um, is it the intent of this committee to uh, develop a standard in terms of how we plant and maintain and, and uh, prune our, our trees? Um, and if that's the case, I'm delighted with that. And if it isn't the case, I would like to have that um, added. Through Mayor Nuttall to uh, Councilor Reitma, yes, I think the intention of that committee would be to look at all of our standards across the board. So everything to do with tree protection, uh, construction standards, everything to do with tree maintenance, and of course, tree planting. That comforts me greatly. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilor Ritma. And now we'll go to Councilor Kungle, and then we'll go to Deputy Mayor Thompson. Thank you. Uh, through you, um, Mayor Nuttall, perhaps if appropriate um, to staff, maybe on the heels of Councilor Ritma's question, um, with respects to, I think, uh, what was referred to as the um, construction or the planting of trees, would it also consider how soil is compacted? So I know Active Transportation and Sustainability talked quite a bit about this on the heels of what Councillor Harris was seeing actively happening in his ward around a tree bylaw, but in particular to that around the quality of the trees, but also not just um, kind of you know, uh, taking care of them after they're planted and having ambassadors at a resident level, but in general, a recognition that when we're compacting the soil and development, that has an impact actually on the health and well-being long term of a tree. So I didn't know um, if that actually would be considered as part of um, what's being looked at around conditions around development. Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Kungle, yes, that I think would be very important. We've always... Uh, had the thoughts that soil conservation is more important than tree conservation in the long run because if you have the right soil, you can grow any tree. Uh, so it's important to conserve that healthy soil in an uncompacted state, and I think that would be something that would be important to inc include in that review. Great. Thank you. I do have some comments, <clears throat> and it's more from just a reflection of the what's being presented and, and as the bylaw has come forward. And again, want to Thanks, staff. It's quite comprehensive. It took me a little bit to digest it and make sure I wasn't making some assumptions, so I appreciate the time staff uh, gave me to um, seek clarity. What I really like about the approach to this is that the two full-time positions being asked for are being fully funded through the program. So the ecologist is being fully funded um, around the approach, around the reserve, and then the forester fully funded through the offset and then the tree permit fees. I did have questions of staff to clarify what exactly do residents, how are they impacted, how is this understood? Um, the bylaw talks a bit about the definition of a tree uh, in this, and so I had concerns that I didn't see a diameter. Um, what I appreciated learning, um, and that eased some of my concerns about at what cost does this come to residents, is we're talking about trees that are 4.5 meters in height in the existing bylaw that would be maintained. So we're really talking about 15 foot trees. Um, so that was helpful to me around saying a tree is not just a tree if I'm looking at my property and saying I want to move a tree or I, I know I've got a, a situation happening where it's clearly diseased, I can remove it without having to seek an arborist or go through a permit expense. Um, so I like um, the consideration in that and the review of other municipalities in this. In particular, my understanding of the program overall, although of course it comes at, at a a price tag does absolutely not come at a price tag from a, at least a, a request through the budget and taxpayer dollars, although it does create a process um, from a permitting. Um, I was happy to see a lot of the focus on bylaw and education as a component of this around resident engagement. And I believe some of the studies even talked about how little residents even knew about an existing tree bylaw. So I'm looking forward to hearing more uh, should this proceed around ongoing uh, engagement and education. Further, um, 
I was really pleased to see um, the acknowledgement about the impact of the loss of revenue through Bill 23 being acknowledged through the uh, Lake Simcoe Regional Conservation Authority. Um, but the projected revenue out of this program would actually allow us to do grants. So we can actually do infill uh, and we can have more direction about how and where funding is spent within our city, maybe broader than what LSRA historically had. So not happy that that change happened for LSRA, um, but I was impressed about the approach staff took to actually look at how do we replace a mechanism that we've lost around being able to build, up, build out our canopy. And just for a point of reference, we were very deliberate um, through both council and, and then before that the Active Transportation and Sustainability Committee engaging staff in setting stretch targets around growing our canopy across the city. So we have not intentionally identified the need to plant trees in a way which is, um, you know, quality of tree, sustainability of tree, and that will come at a cost. Um, so I, I like that there is a grant um, system built into this and a cost recovery for that actual intention. So I fully support this. Thank you, and uh, Deputy Mayor. Oh, Council Corsair, would you like to add? Yes, um, I'm, I, I understand that the only applicable cost um, to a homeowner would be a professional opinion that would be needed to um, have a tree that is dead or causing a hazard or destruction to uh, power lines or structures. Um, the only cost to the homeowner would be to have a professional come in and basically say, yes, it's dangerous or yes, it's dead. And there would not be an added permit fee to that. My concern is um, the, I understand that this is new. I, I could be corrected on this. This is a new um, uh, add to the rules that are already in place. So uh, my concern is that if somebody is cost prohibitive, that they do not have the tree removed because they do not have, are able to afford the professional opinion of a, um, one of the certified people outlined, um, and then the tree is not removed under that situation, and now you have a danger to power lines or structures because somebody can't afford to have a professional come in and certify a debt or dangerous. Talking in circles, it is a late night. Thank you. And um, would you like to ask staff about yes, that? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. So I'm wondering if um, uh, through you, Mayor Nuttall, um, I'm not sure, uh, Bala, I believe, um, the, the uh, or maybe this is to, I'm not sure who I'm directing this to, but is there any way that um, in certain situations, in financial situations, that this kind of uh, can be assisted with the cost of having the tree certified as dead or dangerous? To you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Coser, I'll uh, defer this question to Kevin Rankin, and as I think he's uh, more knowledgeable on the costs uh, associated with such an opinion and how, how the city staff may uh, handle this situation. Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to uh, Councillor Corser. Yeah, the, <laughs> there'd be situations, I think, where we'd run into um, a resident just doesn't know what to do with the tree or is not sure if the status of the tree or thinks it's a risk. Um, that's some of the responsibilities at urban forester position that they would be able to go out and provide that advice, you know, in those situations. Um, in most situations, I, you know, currently right now and probably to the future is we would, you know, direct them to contact one of the certified arborist companies who'd come in and probably give them an estimate for price to remove the tree. So that company who is the certified arborist who would provide a price would be doing that advice with that price as far as their estimate. So it, if the situation is that it is a tree that needs to be removed, um, that advice would come as part of that estimate for what it would cost to remove it. And uh, sorry, and at this point in time, there is uh, no um, program or system that uh, they can get financial assistance with removing that that tree um, going forward. Because I understand this will be an added cost going forward. Uh, through you, Mayor Nettle, to Councillor Corser, I I would see that the cost wouldn't really change today in that example. Um, 
with the proposed bylaw because you'd still have the situation if, if the tree is hazardous or causing a problem or it's you know risk of, of coming down it's still going to need a professional to take it down um, uh, through you, Mayor. Uh, um, it, it, but if somebody can remove their own tree on their own property, which you are allowed to do, as uh, my understanding, uh, it, then they wouldn't have to pay for somebody to come and remove that tree. Right. In that situation, that's correct. So the change would be there is that somebody would provide them the advice that, yes, that tree needs to be removed. So if, if a person contacted the city currently and they asked, you know, I've got this tree, I think it's a hazard. Um, can you look at it? That might be at those situations where the urban forester would go out and say, well, if you're capable of doing this, maybe it's a small little tree that's dead, it's not that large. If it's something that's large and is near a power line, they would obviously give them the advice to, you know, contact a company that's certified and insured and uh, knows how to do those kind of dangerous removals. Well, if, if uh, again, if I may, um, uh, so if, Say, for example, I have a large yard, I have a big dead tree, I have very limited income, and the tree is obviously dead and obviously needs to come down, and if it's going to come down some way, hopefully in a safe manner, um, I would now, as opposed to cutting down the tree, I now would have to secure a professional opinion and then pay for that professional opinion to remove uh, to for me to remove that tree on my property, and so I, I, I'm just a little concerned about trees that are hazardous not being removed because of that extra step that's been put in place. I'm all for protecting trees. Like uh, that's not what I'm speaking to at all. I'm speaking to trees that need to come down that people financially cannot have that extra cost in play. Through you, Mayor Nettle, to Councillor. Courser, I think those would be the situations where the staff person would go out and a, a dead tree is not something that someone has to do a you know a full arboriculture assessment of it or a hazard tree assessment. It, it's dead. It's pretty obvious. That's the advice that would fit the bylaw requirement. You've got an advice for a professional to to remove the tree, and if they can safely do it themselves, um, then that's their option. But you would have to have that certification or that statement for, and you'd keep it as for a year to say that you had if you had some neighbor or somebody complained that that tree came down, then you would have to have still that piece of paper that you paid somebody to come and tell you it was dead. Through you, Mayor Nuttle, to Councilor Courser, I think if this if the city employee went out and saw that situation, they would deal with it the same as they would in, the, in a property standards complaint. Okay. Um, so currently now, if someone has a dead property and another neighbor complains or puts in a complaint, then one of the city uh, arborists goes out and looks at that tree and, and provides a, a written advice. Okay. Um, so we would still have that same situation where we could go out there and, and do that under this program and say, yes, you're right, that's, that's something With that needs to come down. And provide them the written advice, they could keep it in their files for a year or so. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Corser. Sorry, uh, Deputy Mayor, if I can maybe pick up where um, where Councillor Corser just just left off. Um, so, Councillor Corser, I think those are very, very, very good questions. Um, I actually don't really enjoy bylaws that create uh, gaps in the sense that <clears throat> if we get a call. Uh, from somebody who's in one income level uh, who say that they can't afford it, then staff are going to go out and provide some advice. Um, but if you get a call from somebody at a different income level, they go to an arborist. I'm not sure that that's a fair level playing field, quite frankly. Um, and I'm not sure that the public would buy into that. Um, So I think you have a very, very good point, Councillor Corser. I'm not sure what the answer is on the fly right now, um, but perhaps we could have a, a follow-up. Uh, we have two weeks between General Committee and City Council, and I would love to join you in that if you'd allow me to uh, in, in working through that. Um, yeah, thank you very much. It was just uh, something that I thought of as seniors and people like you know, that just don't have that money and to keep that safe 
They don't want anyone's power lines coming down and you know, nothing going through anyone's roof. Yeah, okay. for sure. Thank for you. Sure. For sure. Okay, so I think that maybe if we can have a follow up on that, uh, uh, Mr. Rankin Knight, uh, Councilor Harvey, is it on this? Yes. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mayor Nuttall. Actually, uh, it was just in relation to like the comments about the tree coming down on power lines or coming down on someone's shed or house or whatever. Um, and members of council may or may not know, and the only reason I do know this is because it actually happened to a friend of mine where his mother's very mature tree in the city of Toronto came down on the neighbor's shed and totally demolished the thing. And when they called their insurance company, they were told, not our problem, tell your neighbor to call his insurance company. Um, so it, it actually does have a negative impact on the bordering neighbors too uh, when you have these issues. So it, uh, it becomes a little more complicated than, than as simplistic as we would uh, like to see. And, uh, and obviously it's a good highlight here when it comes to economic levels because like we've got a lot of seniors in our community too that would live in these mature areas where the higher likelihood of a, a tree having some disease issues and, and they just may not have the financial wherewithal to be able to uh, follow this bylaw as it's been uh, proposed. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. And uh, you went exactly where I was thinking, which is, you know, it's one thing if somebody accepts the risk on their own property. But the problem with trees is they don't respect property lines. <laughs> and so uh, you end up with, and that's actually what started this whole, uh, this whole investigation in, in Ward 8. So, uh, so thank you for that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, this is kind of more of a comment. Uh, when we first got this, I phoned uh, Mr. Arangerson, and uh, I was like, this makes no sense. Like, this is way too technical. This is creating more red tape and stuff. And then, you know, thank you to staff and Mr. Rankin for going through it with, you know, members of the public and, you know, phone calls and emails and stuff. But... I just don't want to, and, and look, all the concerns raised on the, the personal and the private tree, but, like, this is a really good win story for Barry. Like, we lost, to um, Councillor Kungle's point, the the ability, you know, with uh, Bill 23, but, you know, Mayor Nuttall actually was the one who introduced this to be a Barry solution, where we were able to reduce the cost to developers, which helps with the cost of development and then plant all the trees back in Barrie on our shores that we're going to, you know, like shore up our uh, stormwater ponds and stuff because the more vegetation you can put around banks and streams, it secures the ground from erosion. So this is where I just don't want this to get lost in the media and stuff. This is actually a very good story. And, uh, you know, I appreciate the report now. When I first read it, I didn't. Um, it was really technical, but now going through all the, the stuff, it, it was needed. So I just, you know, I, I don't want it to get lost that this is a great story. We're, we're going to plant a lot more trees that we had no control over in our own backyards and, you know, in our program. So thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Thompson. And, um, yeah, if I can expand on that, you know, through what staff's put together here, through our, what our public servants have done, is protect the city of Barrie. Not just protect the city of Barrie, actually enhance what what we get here in the city of Barrie. Um, if you think about uh, the idea that there's an institution called the Lake Simcoe Conservation Authority, who, in in when it comes to the replacement policy, have been removed from the process. Um, it was very easy for us to sit around the table and for our public servants to sit there and to complain because we heard a lot of complaining. There are complaints related to Bill 23, there's no question. But they actually went to work and said, well, how do we make, turn this into an advantage for the city of Barrie? How do we, how do we make this part of the Barrie advantage? And uh, through that, uh, although it's really hard uh, to, to see it in some of the, the technical language, you know, this is going to provide for, I mean, right in the report, basically it's going to provide for trees to be able to be planted to uh, increase uh, canopy uh, here in, in the city of Barrie, to beautify uh, areas of the city of Barrie, which, you know, is maybe not the main benefit, but it's an ancillary benefit of some of the decisions that can be made. It's going to uh, 
help uh, protect fish habitat if we're planting down uh, streams and creeks here in the city of Barrie. Uh, I, I, I remember the LSRCA had 12 years ago or 13 years ago, we did some plantings on the Hewitts Creek. We did them on uh, bunkers. We did them on Kitts Creek, Sunnydale Park. Uh, you know, these are things that we will now have control over and we don't have them happen once a year or once every five years. We have them happen all of the time. And, you know, the final one, which is, which is talked about in here, you know, very, uh, the very start of this, uh, we'll, we will have a report back later, is the idea that we will have so many trees that private citizens are going to be able to ask us for free trees, essentially. Like, name another municipality that you can be like, hey, I want a tree. There isn't one, right? And so we have all these enhancements for the for the residents of Barrie, whether it's environmentally, whether it's beautification, uh, a welcoming environment, uh, my personal private property to be enhanced in terms of, of, of trees. And at the same time, there's a 60% reduction in cost. That's unheard of. That's the thing that they say you can't do. But you know what? I can't remember who said it. It might be Mike Lignatieff and I'll probably get in trouble for quoting this. I think he said something about politics is the art of the possible. And in this sense, it was. On a very, very, very minuscule level, this is a very, very, very good thing brought forward by our, our public servants. So, Mr. Rankin uh, and, and uh, your entire team, you know, everyone who's been involved in this, I, I just want to say thank you uh, because uh, you put a lot of work into it. You, uh, you communicated in a way that I don't understand, but you achieved what I would have hoped, <laughs> what I would have hoped, yeah, <laughs> what I would have hoped would be achieved. Uh, do, you know, in two weeks, if we pass this as is with relation to the individual properties and taking down a single tree, I gotta be honest with you folks, I think we're gonna talk about it again in 12 or 24 months and go, we're getting some heat on this, right? Which isn't necessarily totally a bad thing. Uh, if we have to make some adjustments at a later date. Um, overall, you know, we have applications coming in for the development area and the annexation lands for uh, development here in the city of Barrie. And those development applications, I can think of one right now over at Salem and, and Essa area, is gonna, they're going to bring in millions of dollars to be invested in Barrie, not outside of Barry, and that is a very, very, very good news story. Uh, and I'll, I'll stop there because, you know, I didn't think, if you'd asked me six months ago during the election if I could talk for an hour about trees, I probably would have said no. I'm really, really happy with this. So, Michael, if you can make sure if anyone's not here this evening that they, they do get recognized and thanked for the work on this. I think it's something that the rest of the province will actually start to copy us on. So, so thank you. Uh, with that, if there's no other comments, unless somebody could speak about trees longer than I can, uh, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? And it's approved. That uh, completes the staff reports for this evening, and I'll just jump back to uh, the notes here, if that's okay, if everyone can give me a moment. We're going to move on past uh, the information items into inquiries. Deputy Mayor Thompson, do you have any inquiries? I have none, thank you. You have no inquiries this evening? Uh, any other inquiries for anyone around the table? Seeing none, we'll move on to announcements. Councillor Kungle. It is a walk with me Wednesday. Um, so thanks to those who um, logged about 4K in the mall, and uh, we're going to start taking it outside. So if you're interested in meeting up with me, just let me know or follow me on um, Councillor Kungle on the Facebook page, and I'll post where I'm at on Wednesday mornings in the ward and in some of our green spaces. I do have a couple of other announcements, uh, some just notes of thanks, but um, I had the benefit of touring the um, water treatment plant, so I want to thank Diane, Mark, and Dave for arranging that, but also what a brilliant place to tour, and I didn't really realize that that was an open to public option, so I would encourage schools and residents if you're interested. Not only is our report around the quality of our water impressive, but um, the technology being used um, is is pretty amazing and state of the art. So um, it was great to see uh, the inside of the water treatment facility. Um, a couple of other announcements specific to developments in Ward 3. So recently posted on the City of Barrie website um, is a neighborhood meeting for May the 2nd, and it is specific to 290 Cundles 
Street East, so another development in the vicinity. So lots of movement happening there. It's uh, proposed to be a 20 townhouse. Uh, please take a look. The meeting is in the evening by Zoom. You need to register in advance to get the link. If you've got any questions, just reach out to me. But that is a new um, proposed development. It's a neighborhood meeting, so no decisions, but you get to hear the concept being uh, proposed forward. Um, also, I'm assuming uh, Mayor Nettle will speak to you spring into clean and some activities happening for Ward 3 residents and schools. If you put in teams and you're active in the area, um, let me know. I've got uh, draw prizes for residents getting engaged in doing that spring clean for passes to day passes to the East Bayfield Rec Center. So let me know if that's an area of interest. And if you are looking at uh, different areas you're noticing litter, let me know. We'll be starting trash formation Tuesdays in May and back out uh, continuing to do the cleanup after the spring into clean. And I think that is, oh, last one, dare I say, backyard hens. Um, I think I've gotten a reputation about chickens, but I'm still getting lots of questions about the status of backyard hens. Um, so I know staff have done quite a bit of work. The comprehensive zoning bylaw is being is publicly posted. So I want to just point residents who are still asking about what's the status. Um, my understanding is there have been changes to the comprehensive zoning bylaw. You can find information there. That is step one to my understanding. Step two is if we ever wanted to consider a pilot for backyard hens, which was a historical resident engagement a couple years back, we would have to change the animal control bylaw. So just to be really clear, the comprehensive zoning bylaw changes do not necessarily permit us to move into that direction. There will be other steps needed, but do take a look at that bylaw posted on the City of Barrie website. Thank you, Councillor Kungo. Are there any other announcements? Uh, sorry, uh, Councillor Reitman, I did see it before. I apologize. And then Councillor Corser. Um, yeah, this is just for uh, uh, residents of Ward 1. Um, on um, April the 23rd, uh, 2 in the afternoon till 4 at uh, the Parkview Centre, uh, the Mayor and I are going to be there to host a town hall meeting, and uh, you're all welcome to attend and uh, ask your questions or provide uh, your comments. So uh, everybody's welcome in Ward 1. Thank you, Councillor Ritma. Councillor Corser. Okay, this is a save the date for Maternal Mental Health Day on Wednesday, May 3rd. Uh, join me at the second annual Flora's Walk in support of Canadian Peri Men Perinatal Mental Health Collaborative, a nonprofit organization working to remove the stigma, fear, and judgment, isolation, and lack of resources that contribute to many parents suffering from postpartum depression, anxiety, and other mental health issues while pregnant and caring for a baby. So that is the second annual Flora's Walk, and that's Wednesday, May 3rd, which is the World Maternal Mental Health Day, and we're meeting at Meridian Place downtown at 11.30 a.m. If to find out more to join us, um, you can check out my Facebook page, Amy Corser, Ward 4 Counselor, or their website, which is Flora's Walk, F-L-O-R-A-S-W-A-L-K dot C-A slash team dash Barry. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Corser. Uh, Councillor Harris. Mayor Nuttall, is the thank you. Is the um, uh, consultation for the Fermi Arts Centre on your list of announcements? I, I will defer to you if it is, but if not, I'll go ahead. Maybe I'll go ahead. Okay. Um, so. Uh, those of you who follow closely will probably have noticed on our circulation list there was a Performing Arts Centre update. And the important note for that, for this evening, is details of an open house. Uh, so there will be upcoming community engagement open houses scheduled uh, at the Peggy Hill Centre, uh, Community Centre at 171 Mapleton Avenue on Wednesday, April 19th from 4 to 7 p.m. and Thursday, April 20th from 4 to 7 p.m. as well. So uh, for those of you interested and excited about the Forming Arts Centre and where it's going, uh, please, uh, hopefully you can make it out to, uh, to hear about the uh, thoughts and to share your opinions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Any other announcements this evening? Seeing none, uh, I'll uh, jump into uh, my own. Before I do, I just wanted to uh, maybe give a little bit of announcement on uh, the visit we had uh, with Minister Hussein on Monday, um, you know, sometimes we uh, we don't get the opportunity to talk about some of the intergovernmental relations things that are happening, and 
uh, I think this is one that we, we do get to. So uh, in the morning, we had the opportunity to sit down uh, in office and discuss some of the issues that um, are facing Canada, facing Ontario, and facing the city of Barrie in terms of housing. And uh, some of the announcements of funding that, that are coming down from the federal government. So uh, we have, uh, we do have some of the information and we do have our staff in some technical briefings this week uh, with regards to uh, a new $4 billion fund that's been announced. Um, and some of the things that I was really encouraged at that portion of, of the meeting was with regards to the Infrastructure Canada and uh, housing. So in the past, uh, governments work in silo and and departments work in silo and I was really encouraged to hear that infrastructure will be working uh, hand in glove with housing uh, to allow municipalities to be able to uh, make applications and part of the criteria for the applications to infrastructure will be the housing coming online and what the return on investment is for housing so I think that's a, a great thing for a place like the city of Barrie where we have very, uh, you know, we can we can show what the ROI is in terms of housing when we're we're putting applications for it. Uh, the conversation went so well uh, with uh, with our federal counterparts that uh, CAO Prouse and I uh, met up later on that day uh, with uh, Minister Hussein again, and we toured around a little bit uh, around the GO train station in Allendale, also up and down Essa Road, and uh, CAO Prouse had some. Uh, examples of some of the development that was uh, that is being proposed uh, in that area and quite frankly right right across the city and you know I just want to um, highlight we, we say the province the province the province you know the gentleman said that tonight uh, in the public meeting in, in the the affordability committee with regards to the provinces pressuring the city and every city to to intensify right higher densities uh, and all those items uh, the message was no different from the federal government. Uh, the minister, uh, you know, one of the things that we talked about was uh, where there's 20 sto story buildings, well, why not 40? You know, those, those are the conversations that are being started with the city of Barrie. And I think that um, I, I wanted to take the opportunity to share that with you and share that with the public because uh, these are real conversations that are affecting real lives in the sense that we heard that earlier with regards to Ward 8 uh, and Ward 7. Um, Less Ward Seven, actually, but Ward Eight, and uh, uh, the the pressure is real, and the uh, communication is that there will be infrastructure dollars, there will be investments in capacity, there'll be investments in your public service to create faster ways to get housing approved, but they're attached to uh, intensity and and density, so. Um, I just wanted to, to communicate that. I think it was a very honest, clear conversation. And uh, it's something that, you know, we need to recognize around the city of Barrie that we are a child of the province and the, the feds and the province are telling us the exact same thing. Um, and, and, and I just wanted to report back on that. And if I have any other uh, items that come out of that meeting, I'll certainly report them back as, as able. To the, uh, the formal announcements, uh, the City of Barrie is looking for feedback from members of the public concerning naming of the future Allendale Transit Mobility Hub, which will be located within the Barrie-Allendale area next to the existing railway. Members of public can, uh, sorry, members of the public can complete the survey at buildingbarryca slash mobility hub. For further information about the Allendale Transit Mobility Hub and Downtown Mini Hub projects, please visit barryca slash transit hubs project. Nominations are now open for the 5th Annual Mayor's Innovation Awards. These awards celebrate this year's most creative solutions from businesses and individuals and local community groups. This year's award theme is Beyond the New Normal. Nominations are open to Barry businesses, organizations, and individuals from all sectors, stages, and sizes. The submission deadline is May 28, 2023 at 11.59 p.m. For further information or to submit a nomination, please visit investbarry.ca slash innovation awards the city of barry is hosting an online rain barrel sale until april 30th 2023 rain barrels can be purchased by residents online at enviroworld.ca slash barry for further information please visit barry.ca slash water conservation or call 705-726-4242 
The City of Barrie is creating a new comprehensive zoning bylaw which is designed to implement the vision and policies of Barrie's adopted official plan that is currently awaiting approval by the province. Visit buildingbarrie.ca slash zoning to review the first draft document, share your input and learn more. The deadline for feedback is April 28th. Spring has arrived and it's now time to get outside and help clean up our community. Registration is now open for the City of Barrie's Spring into Clean events, which take place April 21st to 23rd. Please register online at barrie.ca slash spring into clean by April the 12th, 2023. The City of Barrie will be participating in the 2023 City Nature Challenge from April 28th to May 1st. This will be the city's first year participating in this international event, motivating people around the world to find and document wildlife in their communities. Community involvement is encouraged for this free program and a kickoff activity is scheduled for April 28th at Sunnydale Park. For more information, please visit citynaturechallenge.org. The City of Barrie Recreation Facilities will be closed for programming on Friday, April 7th, except for the Ontario Minor Hockey Association Championship Tournament. All facilities will be open regular hours between April 8th to April 10th. The City is offering special Easter activities over the holiday weekend. All Easter offerings will operate as drop-in activities and regular drop-in fees apply. For a list of activities, please visit barrie.ca slash recfees. The City of Barrie is updating its affordable housing strategy and is launching a public consultation process that welcomes feedback from residents, potential homeowners, businesses and developers. The City wants to hear why affordable housing is important to you and your experiences finding affordable housing in Barrie. This consultation supports Council's goal of making Barrie an affordable place to live. Throughout the project there will be opportunities for the community to provide feedback including a public survey which will be available in late April. Public sessions and stakeholder meetings and an affordable housing symposium event are planned for May the 4th. National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, which runs from April 9th to April 15th, recognizes the crucial role that public safety uh, telecommunicators play in emergency response. They're the first point of contact for those in distress and their calm and collected responses can make all the difference in life and death situations. Friday, April 7th and Sunday, April 9th, there will be no Barry Transit service. Transit will run regular weekday service on Monday, April 10th. Riders are encouraged, uh, sorry, encouraged to plan their transit trips using myridebarry.ca. On Friday, April 7th, there will be no garbage, organics, recycling, or yard waste collection in Barry. It will take place on the next day, Saturday, instead. Collection will take place as usual on Monday, April 10th, and visit barry.ca curbside slash curbside collection for more information. The next Infrastructure and Community Investment Committee and City Council meetings will be held on Wednesday, April 19th, 2023, as we will not have a meeting next Wednesday. With regards to circulation list for March 29th, 2023, do members of council or members of committee have any requests or questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to the April 5th circulation list. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, we've come to the beautiful time of the evening where we get to adjourn the meeting. So thank you, members of committee and members of staff for all of your work this evening. That was the update from the City Hall. Thank you.